I'm so excited for this one, baby. And it's not just because the Knicks are finally relevant after one trillion years of irrelevancy for the first time in my life, pretty much. But it's really because I wanted to talk about the unforgettable power of music. And I was supposed to write about this yesterday, but I ended up not writing. And I'm glad I did because yesterday the Knicks beat the Pacers again. 2-0 2-0 on the Eastern Conference semifinals. So that was so good. Welcome to the Rock and Roll to Success. I'm Gabe, and today I'm going to talk about music and how sometimes music can turn some events in your life into unforgettable things. So, for instance, I think that there are many songs that transport me into times in my life when I was younger or times that were very emotionally strong for me. You know, when you have that feeling that something that moves you and sometimes you can listen to a song and be transported again back to that time. So when I was a kid, my dad was always listening to music. So some of the songs that he used to listen to when I was a kid, every time that I listened to them, kind of transports me back to my childhood. So for instance, when I listen to Green Day, some of their songs, like a Basket Case, for instance, I remember around the year 2000, when I was about five, six years old, and, and he was listening to them at home or in his car. And many other songs, of course, songs that I remember from growing up, some bands like Linkin Park, bands like Charlie Brown Jr. and CPM 22 that are Brazilian bands from around 2002, 2004, or 5. And that transports me back to that end of childhood, that beginning of adolescence kind of phase. Also, when I listen to some Stroke songs, so the Strokes were a huge band in the early 2000s. And my first real band was pretty much a Strokes cover band because we loved the Strokes so much that pretty much every song that we used to play was the Strokes. And sometimes when I'm feeling a bit more emotional and I listen to some of those songs that we used to play, I get a bit of emotional, especially with Someday that was our most favorite song, the song that we liked the most at the time. And the lyrics start with, in many ways, they'll miss the good old days someday, someday. And even back then, when I was 14, 15, I already had this feeling of nostalgia because I've always been very future centric. So I already knew that we miss those days of adolescence back then when I was still a teenager, which is kind of crazy if you think. And back to New York in 2004. I had this crazy ass trip with my dad and we call it the max trip here in my family because I don't know if you guys saw this movie, but it really was a very important movie for me in my childhood. It's the goofy movie. And I'm not sure if in English they, it was the goofy movie like this, but in Portuguese it was translated as pateto fiume. So Goofy's movie. And in this film, in this movie, Goofy, the Disney character, friends with Mickey Mouse, he he's a single dad and his, his son, Max, he's growing up. So he's beginning to get into those teenage years. So he's not so much of a fan of his dad anymore. And he's thinking about this girl that he likes at school. And he's going through all of these, these trials you have when you're growing up. And Goofy is kind of sad because his son, he doesn't see him as his friend that much anymore. He doesn't, he's not his son's idol anymore. So he kind of resents that. And Max, and so he, he wants to take Max on a trip, on a camping trip. And when they go there, they, they meet. I forget the name of the character in English now. You know that that fat cat guy on on the Disney characters. I, I forgot his name. 
And he also has a little son that's Max's age and they're like best friends. And this other guy is super rich and goofy. He's pretty working class. He, they pretty much were sleeping on the car or on a small tent and the guy had a motor home and video games and everything. So you have this conflict. And anyways, they go on this big road trip that I think Goofy had gone in something similar with his dad back in the day. And throughout that trip, they make this super strong bond and they reconnect as father and son. So that was the purpose of the trip, after all, to have this very strong bond between father and son. So through a trip, because when you go on a trip with someone, you end up having a very intense relationship with them to the good or to the evil. And in this case, it was pretty much that trip that really changed my relationship to my dad because my dad's always worked a lot. And of course, we do things together. And he was a reference for me back then. I was 10 years old when we went on the trip. But it was pretty much that trip that really solidified our relationship. And from then on, we've had other trips, of course, but that one was the one. And I think that was the only long trip that I have with my dad. So you can see the power. It's been almost 20 years already and the power of that trip. But what I was going to talk about is the music and how sometimes listening to some songs that we listen to on that trip, I can't be teleported back to how I was as a little kid and all the things that we did and how I felt and everything just by listening to some of those songs. So on that trip, we spent almost one month in the U.S., so about one week in Florida, one week to 10 days in Florida. Then we went to New York. That was one of my dad's greatest dreams at the time, probably the greatest dreams. He'd always daydreamed about going to New York and listening to songs about New York and movies and Spike Lee, all of that. So it was something very important to him and to be able to go there with me that as a little kid back then. And I mean, I don't want to go too much into that trip. We had so many adventures, but going back to the music side of things, there are songs like Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand or Somebody Told Me by The Killers that were all the hype back then. Also, I think 1989 by Smashing Pumpkins, is it? There are, are a few other songs that are coming back to my mind right now, but I don't remember the names of them right now, but like I kind of know how to sing them. But anyways, yeah, 1985, that was the song I was thinking of about the girl that remembers high school, like, the peak of her life and and now she's a, a mom and everything because that would be almost 20 years later after she graduated from high school so anyways you see how i remember a bunch of those songs and how they transport me back to those moments so in that trip we did something that was really magical and that's another thing especially in trips but in your daily life, sometimes when you go to an event, you will have that memory forever. So that's why people go to concerts. That's why people go to uh, sporting events, to games, because you end up solidifying memories that are much stronger and that will go on through all of your life. So I went with my dad to a Nick game. And it was the Knicks against the Clippers at the time. The Knicks beat the Clippers 110 to 96. So you can see how I remember those things. And I was only 10 years old. It's been almost 20 years. And I still remember a bunch of those things. So I remember that Stefan Marbury was number three on the Knicks. And he was a star. But they also had Tim Thomas, Kurt Thomas. Alan Houston didn't play. I think he was hurt. But he was one of the main guys in the Knicks. And 
I remember some of the things that the court announcers would say, like when it was a free pointer, he would say free pointer, or when Marbury scored, it was like Stefan Marbury. And I remember all of those things, all of those audio inputs. I remember going in to get the game. I remember us buying the tickets from a hustler a few hours before the game as well. So I remember all of those things. And there is a picture that my dad probably still has it of me as a kid, super long hair, almost looking like a girl with a, a black hoodie written New York that we bought at some random outlet mall somewhere. And, you know, one of those foam, huge hands with the finger like this, like New York or Knicks, something like that. I remember all of this, but I also remember some of the songs that played in that game, especially right after the, the, end, the game ended, they started playing Native New Yorker. So, you know, that song... I'm a native New Yorker. Bum, 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 ba -da -da -da. So I remember that almost 20 years ago. And I vividly have this image. They were interviewing one of the players and, and everyone was going out. Like me and my dad were probably the last ones to get out of the, the building. Because, you know, Americans have this weird habit of since they know that the team is going to win, they start going out and like going home and for us that was bizarre because we paid for the tickets we were going to stay here to the bitter end win or lose right but anyways we were pretty much the last ones and i had like my huge finger stuck out and i remember the guy i don't know which player it was but i remember him doing like hey like from afar and that was so awesome you know i was a little kid Right after the game, you see those beasts, those huge giants that were dunking left and right a few minutes ago. And then the guy's like, hey, to you. And they're like, holy cow. I'm Wow. Like, I'm his friend or something. So that was pretty cool. And then I remember almost 10 years after that in 2013, in the beginning of 2013, because we'd gone to, to Florida for the holidays. So my sister had never been to Disney and I met my parents there with her and we were there for Christmas and the New Year's. And right after the New Year's, the Knicks were going to play the Magic in Orlando. And that was another awesome day or night, evening, because I ended up buying the tickets from some StubHub kind of site. I don't remember the name of the site back then. And we ended up buying some awesome tickets. And I bought it with my own money at the time. I was only 18, so that was pretty cool as well. And we ended up getting those club level tickets that were on like more VIP kind of section. That was so cool. And the game was awesome as well. So the Knicks beat the Magic 114 to 106. And the Knicks had Carmelo Anthony. They had Amari Stoudemire coming back from injury. Tyson Chandler, Jason Kidd, Marcus Camby. So a bunch of legends. Many of them going out, like phasing out of their careers. But anyways, we had a bunch of legends. And the Magic were no joke as well. They had Aaron Aflalo. They had... J.J. Redick, Sacha Vucevic, and Melo scored 40 points. The game was awesome, but I still remember some of the songs that played in the game. So I remember when the players were getting onto the court right before the game, they played the song Let's Go by Neo. And Let's Go was a newish song that had just been released at the time, and it's still relevant. They still play it at NBA games because it's so strong to pump you up so let's go with no excuses now I'm here and now i'm talking here and now. let's go and it's it was such a powerful thing like the crowd getting on and then later on in the game they started playing don't stop believing and 
everyone in the crowd was singing, you know, just a small town girl. That was so cool. And that got so ingrained in my mind that I still remember it now, more than 10 years later. So you see, music has this power to ingrain in your mind the feelings. So it's almost like a time capsule that you can go back to that moment in time in your life in which you were living. So it can be a trip, it can be an event, it can be pretty much anything, a, a period in your life. But by listening back to those songs, you're pretty much teleported back to that time. And it's very strong. You have a very strong emotional connection. And of course, you can have that with pictures. Of course, you can have that maybe with a movie. But I think music, since it's something that it's pretty much omnipresent in our lives, you listen to music in any shop you go to, you listen to music on the car, at the airport, whatever. So I think because of this, you end up having this connection, this very strong connection. And this is my message to you to never stop believing, to use this power of music in your favor so that you can remember the good events better, so that you can go through the bad times better as well. And, you know, as a rock star, you probably love music already and you already use it to the best of your abilities. And yeah, music is awesome. Sports are awesome. I hope that you have a great day. And by all means, please share it with your friends. Follow me on YouTube. Go check out my newsletter because great things are coming. Keep rocking. Keep rolling. Peace.